My name is Nancy Molnix Tweedale, and 50 years ago, I was lucky enough to be able to start a project that resulted in the acquisition of the Alexander Calder Stabia Le Grand Vitesse for Grand Rapids, Michigan. Translated, it means the great swiftness, but as Sandy Calder says, it means the Grand Rapids. Seldom has there been a cooperative effort that has produced such a magnificent result as this event today. It was in April of 1967 that I wrote a letter to Henry Geldzeller, who was the director, curator of American painting and sculpture at the Metropolitan Museum and asked him to come to Grand Rapids to give a speech about American painting and sculpture. And he did, and he said, you know, it'd be nice to have a piece of sculpture on that big plaza. And I said, yes, it would. How do I do that? He said, you write to your congressman and ask him to help. Our congressman was Gerald Ford. So I wrote the letter, my kitchen counter, sent it off to Ford, and he was always very um, willing to answer your letters. And so I got a letter back, and the next thing I knew, I had a phone call from Roger Stevens, Stevens who was the chairman of the National Endowment for the Arts, the National Council on the Arts. And he said, I think we're gonna give you some money to get a sculpture for your city. I was very excited about the idea, the concept of this, of this grant. That the, that the money would be used to commission an original work of art for a specific civic site, that the art would belong to all of the people, not just to a select few, that it would be in the heart of a community, not isolated in some museum somewhere, that it would be paid for by money specifically determined to be used for that purpose and matched by private funds also for that particular purpose that it would always, in fact, and, and uh, by tradition, belong to all of the people. The National Endowment um, had a policy of appointing a, a, a committee to select the artist, a commissioning panel. And three people on the panel were from Grand Rapids, and they all met in Grand Rapids in August of 1967, and the artist that they chose was Alexander Calder. Perhaps Calder is best known as the man who made sculpture move. All of us know the delight of the mobile, those hanging balanced pieces that move by the whims of the wind. We hang them in our homes, perhaps not knowing that Alexander Calder gave them birth. But whether they are light enough, made of tiny pieces of glass, plastic, or metal, and held together by fine wire to be activated by the slightest current of air, or if they are constructed of hundreds of pounds of steel, they move, they change. They, as someone has said, are the idea of a man who put sculpture into orbit and added time to space long before man began to explode. We all wanted him to come to Grand Rapids. I mean, he didn't have a lot to see if he were to come to Grand Rapids because the buildings were just barely beginning to be built. So we met with him in December of 1967 and we, and Bill Hartman was there, we met in New York. Bill Hartman had brought a big architectural model of the whole plaza area and the two buildings so that Calder could see how vast the plaza was and the orientation of the buildings and so forth. They were very linear buildings, straight up and down in Mies van der Rohe style. And he said, I want to put it there. <laughs> and he pointed his finger to a place that already had, it looked like a fountain designated for that area. Well. What Calder wanted, Calder was going to get. So we came home to Grand Rapids and we talked to the city commission and the county commission. And they said, we'll just stop work on that fountain. We'll save a lot of money if we do that. And if Calder wants it there, that's where it'll be. And that's where it is. Alexander Calder puts a great deal of his own special delight in life in his art, as well as his spirit and his courage. And although the Grand Rapids Calder cannot be identified as a dog or a woman or a man on a horse, I'll guarantee that when you go up to it, you'll feel its power and its vitality, its thrust and its dignity. Calder thought it was going to come into the Mus to Muskegon, but it didn't. It came in through uh, Detroit. 
uh, down the St. Lawrence Seaway, and we were down in Detroit when it arrived. The boat was called the Bonita, and it was on the, were these great, big, huge crates. There were six of them, I think, loaded onto flatbed trucks and brought to Grand Rapids, and we had, I was in a plane above, we got home first, but there was a police escort all up I-96, and they, they, there were 27 major sections, and the people from Haven Bush Steel Company unpacked those crates and had a great big crane and lifted those 27 sections out, laid them on the plaza like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. And uh, it took three days to put it together, and it was quite a crowd pleaser. There was no festival the year we dedicated the Calder in 1969, but the following year was the first festival at the Calder, and it had a whole different kind of um, feeling about it than the ones behind the art museum. I was the chair, the co-chair of the children's involvement area for the first 10 years of festival. For the children's involvement, we had a paint in, we had easels set up and smocks for the children to put on. We also had something we called the glue in. A friend of mine, Ken Childs, uh, traveled for American seating and he'd been to San Francisco in Giardelli Square. And he came home and he said, I've got to tell you what I just saw in San Francisco. I said, what? He said, they call it a glue in. And they get all these pieces of wood and buckets of glue and the kids go and they make their sculpture with all of the stuff. I think that would be so great for festival. Well, we're the furniture city and do we have, <laughs> do we have throwaway pieces of wood? You bet we do. And then we added um, the children's performance stage and so we had kids performing for kids as well. Oh my gosh, it was just amazing. Um, the first year there were maybe 50,000 people by the time I left. Ten years later, it was over a half a million people. I think Grand Rapids is one of the luckiest cities in the world to have a great work of art that has already been acclaimed to be a masterpiece, created especially for us by one of the greatest American sculptors of the 20th century. is just beyond belief, really. But the great Stabio, La Grande Vitesse, will last for a thousand years, as all that is truly great in art seems to do. And I can't think of a more positive, testimony to, um, to our understanding and cherishing man's ability to dream and to create and to imagine. He did the Calder on the roof. Um, that was kind of a plain ugly roof and Joe Grassi was a city manager then and he called me up and he said, Nancy, do you think Calder might design a rooftop for the county building? I said, I don't know, but I'll ask him. So we had a photographer take pictures of the, of the building all, from all angles and I, I went to New York every October to be at the opening of the Calder exhibit at his gallery in Manhattan. Calder would always take me out to lunch and that particular year um, I sent the photographs to him and he'd painted on them. You pick out the one you like. And I said, what are you going to do with the rest of them? He said, I'm going to give them to you to take home to your city. So we had this wonderful painting and we um, transcribed it and painted it on the roof. And it's there, the only Calder on the roof in the world. He loved Grand Rapids. He, I think, was very proud of the way this community has embraced the Stabio, the fact that it's on all the street signs and on the city flag and on the city letterhead and so many things happen at the Calder. I'd like people to realize how important this piece was for Calder. He came back twice to see it. It's kind of been a sentinel. You know, it's been called an icon, but more than that, it's a sentinel. Look at me and, and take heed. Um, you can do these wonderful things, just, it, just keep trying. No one can paraphrase what the Stabio will, how you'll react to it when you go up and you see it and you walk through it and you touch it and you become a part of it. We must remember that the arts are as essential to a community as conscience is to an individual. Art is not a tender or fragile thing, but it must always be recognized and supported as a vital part of life. We are not going to reshape our community through apathy and fear and negativism. The future will belong to those who are willing to assume responsibility and who believe that our greatness lies before us, not behind us. 
And it is, quite simply, an act of faith.